I will start the seminar. It's my great pleasure to present a short gymnasium from University of Southampton. He did PhD in Vanderbilt University, in USA. His research area is geometric and combinatorial group theory. In particular, his interest includes world hyperbolic and relativity and hyperbolic groups, of groups as well as constellation theory groups. and profile topology Now I'm of the groups. Barry, uh, Please, to move microphones, everyone, should exactly off speak the microphones. The type of that the you talk is about virtual reduction about visual reduction property on groups. So go ahead. Please I thought you have the words. Okay, well uh, uh, thank you very much Sheila for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak on your seminar. So uh, yeah I've only want been to Brazil once and I really enjoyed it. Daisy organized a satellite conference to the ICM yes. in Brazil. So that was great. Uh, so it's, uh, it's great to come back even though it's only virtually. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I thought that this, is, this should be a good topic for an algebra seminar. So things are pretty algebraic there, but uh, there is a connection to geometric group theory, as you will see. Um, yeah, so I'll start with defining um, the basic concepts. So I just remind you what a retract is. This is a standard uh, notion. Uh, a subgroup is a retract of, the, of a group if basically there is a projection from the group onto the subgroup in the usual sense that the projection, the restriction of the projection to the subgroup is the identity map. So rho maps k to h and rho of h is h for rho h in h. And uh, this is for, well, in terms of group, this is equivalent uh, to having a decomposition of the group k um, as a semi-direct product uh, and semi-direct h where n is the kernel of the retraction. Okay, so it's easy to see that uh, it's an equivalent, really. So a retract is really a semi-direct factor. Is there a question? Turn on the microphone, please. Sorry? No, everybody, switch, everybody, please. Switch the microphone, please. Okay, continue. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, so anyway, basic examples, of course, are direct factors. So if you have a direct factor or a direct composition, then each of the factors is a retract, obviously. It's just a special case of semi-direct product, but also free factors. So if you have a free product of two groups, then each factor is also a retract. Again, you just kill uh, the other factor and uh, it works evidently. So uh, a virtual retract is a retract of a finite index subgroup. So formally, uh, a subgroup H of a group G is virtual retract if there is some finite index subgroup of, of G, call it K, such that H is a retract of K. Okay, and uh, there are much more virtual retracts than just retract. So for a retract, we ne it needs to be, you know, really a semi-direct factor. For a virtual retract, there are much more examples. So and the, the very first very easy example is uh, as follows. So if G is residually finite, then every finite subgroup is a virtual retract. So let me try and, uh, okay. Okay, so I don't know if I need to uh, remind people what uh, residually finite is. Uh, so I have some basic definitions here. I'll let me go very quickly through them. So <clears throat> it's because, so th these are so-called properties of profinite topology on a group G. And uh, so if you have a group G, you can always define the profinite topology on it. Basic open sets are of the form 
well, G times N, where N is a finite index subgroup. So if you think about open neighborhoods of the identity, these are the finite index normal subgroups of your group. And it's not difficult to check that this forms a basis of a topology. It's called the profinite topology. And uh, G is residually finite, uh, well, if this topology is Hausdorff. And this is equivalent to simply saying that the intersection of all finite index normal subgroups of your group is trivial. Uh, or equivalently, again, uh, this is a classical notion. Maybe the classical definition is that if you have a non-trivial element of the group, you can map it to a finite group so that the, uh, the image of this element is still non-trivial. Okay, um, so, right, so let me explain this claim that I've just said that if G is reasonably finite, that every finite subgroup of G is a virtual retract. How does this work? Well, uh, so if, okay, so if H, uh, can you see what I'm writing? Just, just to check. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, okay, great. Great, thank you. So, so if H is a, a finite subgroup of G, a residual finiteness means that, well, you can map it basically to a finite group injectively, any finite subset in particular, the subgroup H. So there is a normal subgroup of finite index in G such that, um, and intersected H is trivial. Okay. And uh, well, uh, then this, this will be your kernel. So then we can define K to be just uh, the product HN. This is a subgroup of finite index in G. It has finite index, well, it's a subgroup because N is normal and it has finite index because N has finite index. And moreover, this is a semi-direct product just by construction. You know, it's a, we have two factors. Their intersection is trivial. So if you kill, if you kill M, you get H, right? So this is, and, uh, oh, by construction. By construction, basically K is isomorphic to the semi-direct product of M with H because and it's normal, their intersection is trivial. So that's it. So therefore this H is a retract. So uh, this, this is where we use. So this is uh, the residual finiteness was used here right, to find such an N. Okay, so this shows that, I mean, uh, well, the group, you know, it may not be a finite subgroup, may not be a retract of your group, but if it's residually finite, it's always a retract of a finite index subgroup. Okay. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, this is uh, the one basic example. The other basic example is <clears throat> if G is free, uh, then uh, Marshall Hall's theorem, the classical theorem, says that every finitely generated subgroup of a free group is a free factor of a subgroup of finite index, right? And since free factors are retracts, uh, it follows that every finitely generated subgroup of a free group is a virtual retract. Okay. So this is a corollary of the classical statement of whole. Okay, so, and the last, well, this is the, the more modern example so maybe 10 years ago, Haglund and Weiss uh, introduced this class of virtually special groups. Uh, this is in geometric group theory, this is related to basically groups that, that are fundamental or up to finite index fundamental groups of zero cubical complexes with certain properties, certain nice properties. So they introduced this class of groups, which became very important. And uh, they proved in particular in their work that if uh, you have a quasi-convex subgroup of such a virtually special hyperbolic group, then it's a virtual retract. And uh, this is important uh, for many applications um, 
of these groups. Okay, so these are three basic examples. And uh, so they really should show that there are much more virtual retracts than retracts. So it is worth um, studying them. And uh, well, let me mention why uh, virtual retracts, why am I interested in virtual retract, retracts and why are they important? So one reason is that they are nicely embedded in the group if you have a virtual retract. So what do I mean by nicely embedded? For instance, the following fact, if your group is finitely generated, then any retract of a finite index subgroup, any virtual retract is uh, also finitely generated. That's easy because it's it's an image of a finite index. It's a portion of a finite index subgroup. So, but it's also undistorted in the word metric. So it's, uh, in other words, uh, it is quasi asymmetrically embedded in the group. So, this is something nice. This is a property of, uh, in some sense, uh, nice, nice embedding. Okay, uh, the second uh, property, if G is residually finite, then uh, it is known that, uh, well, every finite index subgroup is also, of course, residually finite. And um, the profinite topology on any uh, virtual retract H is induced by the profinite topology on G, namely every closed set or every open set, every closed set of H is also closed in G in this very strong sense. And this in particular implies that the profinite completion of H embeds in the profinite completion of G naturally. Okay. So another reason for studying virtual retracts, if you want to prove something about a subgroup you may be able to use the fact that it's a virtual retract, and I have done that in the past. So many group properties are preserved by passing to finite index subgroups and uh, to retracts. In particular, it follows that they are preserved by passing to virtual retracts. So, well, which properties? So for instance, uh, many finiteness properties, in particular, if the group is finitely presented, and every virtual retract is also finitely presented. This is also true for uh, type FPN or FN, so for homological properties. Um, another property uh, of conjugacy separability, this is the um, another property of the profinite topology that I mentioned. So a group is conjugacy separable if every conjugacy class is closed in the profinite topology. And hereditarily conjugacy separable means every finite index subgroup is conjugacy separable. And it's easy to see that basically, well, a nice property of a retract is that if two elements of your retract are conjugate to each other, even only if they're conjugate in the whole group. And this basically allows you to deal with uh, conjugacy fairly easily. And so, for instance, hereditary conjugacy separability of the B group implies this for virtual retracts. So this was something that motivated me as well. Are there any questions so far? I think the end, I open the questions. Sorry? Uh, no question. So. No question for, for all you. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is a little motivation. Uh, okay. So I'll define. Well, I mean, it's really uh, useful information if you if you want to study a property of a subgroup, uh, and really it's embedding. Knowing that it's virtual retract is a very strong information. It gives you a lot. <clears throat> uh, so of course you can then study groups where all subgroups, all finitely generated subgroups, are virtual retracts. This is a definition given by Long and Reed. So they define a property of a group, LR, or which stands for local retractions, but I guess maybe also for the initials of the authors. Um, so it has property LR if every finitely generated subgroup of G is a virtual retract. And then the second property that I will talk about uh, 
I call it virtual retractions onto cyclic subgroups, shortly VRC. Um, this is if every cyclic subgroup is a virtual retract. Okay. So there are these two properties related to virtual retractions. retractions. And uh, well, uh, let me list very uh, basic uh, properties. So of course, by definition, LR is stronger than VRC. So LR implies VRC. And it's not hard to, so to show that any group with VRC must be residually finite. And in fact, every cyclic subgroup of such a group will be so, uh, closed in the profinite topology. Um, LR therefore implies that uh, the group is LERF. So LERF, it's, it's again one of those notions from a profinite topology. A LERF just means that every finitely generated subgroup is closed in the profinite topology, or it's also called sometimes subgroup separable. So in other words, it can be reformulated as saying that uh, every finitely generated subgroup is the intersection of subgroups of finite index of your group. Okay, and uh, like I said, VRC has this weaker consequence that cyclic subgroups are closed in the profinite topology or cyclic subgroups are separable. Okay, so these are very basic properties. Um, okay, so what are the examples of groups with LR? So again, a reminder, LR just means uh, every finitely generated subgroup is a virtual retract. And um, yeah, my notation for virtual retract is, is less than or equal sub VR. So this just means it's a virtual retract of the group. Okay, so what are examples? So of course, finite groups. So LR is a so-called finiteness property because all finite groups have it. Um, that's obvious because in a finite group, every subgroup is a virtual retract because every subgroup has finite index. So the retraction is just the identity of the subgroup onto itself. So it's a finiteness property and of course finite groups have it. And the second uh, example is actually one of the most important examples as far as I could see, find generated virtually abelian groups. So I want to uh, give a quick argument why abelian groups have property LR. So let me try and write it down. Okay, so the example I, I told you about is that all finely generated virtually abelian groups have LR, but let me prove this easier claim that if G is finely generated and abelian, uh, then it has a large, this is much easier. So how do we do that? It's okay, okay. So, well, this is, should be easy to start, so yeah. Now, uh, what I said is that uh, this is true for, if you replace G by virtually a billion, but finally it's generated again. Um, but uh, you can't use this argument anymore because it's not true I mean, the first thing we did here, we quote, we took the quotient by uh, by H, but in virtually billion groups, it's not true that every subgroup is uh, normal. So you cannot do that. But for virtually billion groups, uh, uh, you can use, uh, what, what I used in my proof is some basic uh, fact from the presentation theory, uh, namely the Marshkes theorem for uh, representations of finite groups. Yeah, I was very pleased that I could use Marshall's theorem in my research. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, let's go to the next example. So yeah, I already mentioned Marshall Hall's theorem. And uh, so free groups in particular are therefore a property LR. So every finely generated subgroup is a virtual retract by Marshall Hall's theorem. And uh, then Peter Scott proved the same Thing for fundamental groups of uh, closed-oriented surfaces, so for surface groups. Basically, in the same paper where he proved that surface groups are LERF, uh, this is, uh, the, his method really proved the stronger fact that surface groups have this property LR. 
um, Henry Wilton proved uh, that uh, so-called limit groups have this property. And this is much more recent. Um, and the limit groups are a class of groups uh, people like to study in geometric group theory. So you can define them purely um, in, in terms of residual properties. So they are also called uh, finely generated, fully residually free groups. So, but uh, yeah, I won't go, if you don't know what this is, yeah, I won't go any further. And uh, well, if you, if you look at these, you know, first examples, it's sort of, these are sort of, they, they have this sort of uh, non-positively curved flavor. Um, and the so the last example is, has a different flavor. The last example is basically a generalized lamp lighter group. So you take a cyclic group CT, raise it to power K, uh, take the reef product with Z, and this has um, property LR. And this, is, this was proved by Davis and Orshansky, essentially. It's, it's not very difficult. Okay, so, but these are basically all examples I know of groups with this property. So let me tell you which groups don't have the property LR. So if you have a non lerf group, then because we saw that uh, LR implies lerf, any non lerf group will be a non example. So um, the basic, well, non lerf group, the easiest one maybe to construct is F2 cross F2. Or maybe not the easiest, but it's. Uh, it's easy to, to discuss it because even though F2 itself is a free group of rank two, uh, the rank product of itself, of, of F2 with, its, with itself, no longer has a LERF property and therefore it doesn't have a LR property. Okay, and another example, if you have a virtually polycyclic group, it's, uh, well, it's known, you know, the finiteness properties of virtually polycyclic groups are quite, good usually, but uh, not for our property LR. So if, if your virtually polycyclic group is not virtually abelian, then it won't have LR. So the, the easiest example of such a group is the Heisenberg group. You can think of it as the group of the, uh, upper triangular matrices with ones on the diagonal uh, with integer entries. So this is a nice uh, step two nilpotent group, which uh, which is definitely LERF and it has lots of nice properties, but it, it won't have LR. Okay. One reason for this is because it has infinite center and this center is not going to be a retract of any finite index subgroup. Okay. Um, right, oh yeah, so let me see the timing. So do I have 50 minutes, right? So I have to finish. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I should, should I prove this fact that a virtually polycyclic group, uh, if has a LR, then it's, uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me give a quick sketch of a proof. Why not? So, Okay, so this is the proposition. If G is a virtually polycyclic group with LR, then it must be virtually abelian. Right, so how do we prove this? Um, well, let's prove it by contradiction. Let G be a minimal counterexample to this statement. So G is virtually polycyclic. Well, let's say just polycyclic. We can virtually, it doesn't really matter here, polycyclic has LR. And it's derived length, well, it's not virtually abelian, so it must have the right length greater than one. And it's the smallest possible. Right, so so by, by induction then, well, then it's the right subgroup, G prime. Well, it's polycyclic, so it will be smaller than all of G, but it's normal subgroup. And moreover, because it's polycyclic, uh, G prime will be finely generated because in a polycyclic group, every subgroup is finely generated. Okay, G prime is finely generated. So, okay, so it must be a virtual retract of 
your group? Well, so there must be this kernel n of the retraction. It must be n, which is normal in, in um, well, let's say maybe I shouldn't call it normal, uh, a subgroup in G normalized by uh, the commutator, the G prime, the derived subgroup, uh, such that their product has finite index in G, right? Uh, it's finite. Okay, this is what it means to be a virtual retract. There will be a complement normalized by, by G prime, such that their product is a subgroup of finite index. Oh yeah, and what I've missed, their intersection must be trivial, right? Okay, this is what I missed. Okay, so now uh, this fact here, what does it tell us about M? Well, involved for the in this easy question. Can you tell me what what can we conclude from this? That it's uh, it survives in the abelianization. Yes. So in particular, yes. N prime is a billion. N sorry, N M <coughs> is a billion, right? Because it's it yeah. it will uh, inject into the abelianization. But moreover, of course, so, so we saw that G prime n, well, actually this will be isomorphic to G prime direct product n because in this, in this group, G prime is normal. It's a derived subgroup and n is normal. So the, you have two normal subgroups, their intersection is trivial. So this is an intrinsic uh, way of saying that G prime n is really the direct product of G prime and n because both G prime and then are normal, right? So this is a direct product. N is abelian and G prime has smaller derived length. G prime has smaller derived length than G. Okay, so now, what was the... I think it, you don't need it uh, here anymore because G prime times N is a billion and it is of finite index. So basically... You uh, don't well, with, yeah, G prime, well, G, yeah, I, I guess I could, I could reduce it to the case when uh, G was made a billion, but I didn't assume that. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, there is a last step to do. So where is the contradiction? Oh, the contradiction should be in the sense that uh, G prime, oh yeah, G prime will be a billion, right? Because G was, uh, yeah, G, G prime has LR because it's a subgroup of a group with LR. And G prime is, uh, well, G was minimal counterexample. So this means that G prime must be a billion. Yeah, because uh, any subgroup of a group with LR has LR. This is easy to see. And I will mention it in a moment. So, yeah, so the derived subgroup will have to be billion just by minimality. Because otherwise I could take the derived subgroup as my minimal counterexample. Okay, so it must be billion. So, okay, so this is an abelian group. And uh, like Pavel mentioned, uh, it has finite index in G. That's a contradiction. G uh, is virtually billion. Contradiction. Okay. So this is the, the proof. 
Any questions? Okay, well, this is basically using the very strong fact that if you have a normal subgroup, then the only way that a normal subgroup can be retract is when it's a direct factor, right? That's what, that's what I used. A normal subgroup is retract if and only if it's a direct factor. And it's a virtual retract if and only if it's a direct factor of a finite index subgroup. And so basically this is what I'm using in the proof that if you have a virtually polycyclic group, then uh, because all normal subgroups are finitely generated, uh, well, you can easily conclude that it must be virtually abelian, basically. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ashwat, I have a question. Does, yeah. uh, can this type of argument be extended to, um, I don't know, maybe soluble groups of type FP infinity? There is a... Um, Soluble groups of type F infinity. So, well, you, so you can't use that the right subgroup is finely generated anymore, right? Exactly. So uh, this right. Is, this, yeah, yeah. This okay. is the problem. Yeah. So there, there are other arguments. I think uh, actually there is a. Um, I have reference to Desi's paper actually, so maybe I'll, I'll find it. Uh, let me check. Um, um, Yeah, so there is a there is a statement basically that if you have a, well this property even even VRC it implies that the first virtual batch number is infinite. So if you have a group with a finite first virtual batch number, then and it is let's say torsion free, then uh, you can have LR. You can have even VRC. And mm -hmm. I think Daisy uh, with Martin Brightson. They prove that if you have a finitely presented nilpotent by abelian uh, group, then uh, it has a finite virtual Betty number, first virtual Betty number. So therefore, uh, it won't have this property. Mm -hmm. okay. This is probably the most general result I could think about. Yeah, yeah but I'll, yeah, there is another statement which I, I shall mention in this regard. Uh, okay, um, let's go back to. Oh. Okay, uh, what's happening? second I'm trying to okay can you see my slides now or, or you're seeing something yes yes yes, yes. 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 The slides. you're seeing the slides okay thank you good okay so right let's go uh, to properties so stability of LR so again this is not a property enjoyed by many um, groups and so we don't expect it to be very stable but it is, however, stable under just free products. So it's not stable under direct products as the example of F2 process, two shows. But it is stable under uh, direct products, a uh, free product, sorry. Not direct, but free. Uh, this was proved by Dietik, Margolis, and Steinberg. Um, it is, like I mentioned, it is stable under passing down to any subgroup, just like, say, residual finiteness. Um, so this is a very strong property. If you can, in, if every subgroup inherits this property, this is, as we know, very strong, and it's not difficult to see that. Well, because basically, if it's a re virtual retract of a bigger group, then it's a virtual retract of any subgroup that it that is con uh, contains it. So, okay, and uh, well, the next natural question to ask is uh, whether it's stable under commensurability. So since it goes down to any subgroup, does it go up to a finite index subgroup? 
So if K has finite index in G and K has LR, does G also have LR? So this is the question. And uh, well, if you think about it for a second, so what it says is that if you have a, a finite generated subgroup of your G, uh, well, you sort of want to intersect it with K and use the fact that it's, it's a retract, virtual retract of K to conclude that the, that the original subgroup was a virtual retract of G. So this leads to the question two, which is that what happens if you have a, a H having finite index in A and being inside G and H is a virtual retract of G, does it follow that A is a virtual retract of G? So can you, can this virtual retractions, does it, can be lifted to finite index over groups. If you could, if, if the question, if the answer was positive here, it would be positive here. That's easy to see. Okay, so again, let's let's talk about uh, question two. So I have an example which shows that it's uh, it's not always possible to lift such a virtual retraction, and uh, it's uh, well basically. Yeah, if you want to, as, as we do in, you know, in group theory quite often, if you want to study uh, a property of a finite index overgroup, there is this uh, collusion in Krasner rating uh, of, uh, of an overgroup into a reef product, right? So by studying reef products, you can sometimes conclude things about the finite index overgroups. So, but this is where this example comes in. This is sort of the idea. So you take uh, any X to be any group and G to be the reef product of X with the cyclic group of order two. So this is basically X times X directly extended by an automorphism alpha of order two, well, where alpha simply permutes the coordinates. So alpha of X, Y is Y, X for all X, Y and X, X. Okay, so this is a simple setting. Now we define our subgroup H to be the diagonal subgroup of the direct product. This is just uh, the subgroup consisting of all uh, pairs of form XX. And we define its, uh, well, A to be the subgroup generated by H and the, the alpha. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that alpha, well, A is actually centralizer of alpha here because alpha permutes the coordinates. So the only thing it centralizes is precisely the diagonal subgroup in X cross X and itself. So, so B2 uh, H cross C2. So in particular, uh, H has index two in A, right? Okay. So and H is a virtual retract of G because it's actually a retract. The diagonal subgroup is a retract of the direct product. You can just map uh, X, Y to X, X, for instance, or X, Y to Y, Y. That would be a retraction. Okay. So you can easily check that this is a retraction. So H, the diagonal subgroup is indeed a, a ret always a retract of the direct product. Okay, but the proposition says that unless your original group X was virtually abelian, uh, A uh, will not be a virtual retract of, of G. So you've extended your diagonal subgroup by uh, automorphism, well, by alpha, but you've destroyed the retraction completely. There is no longer a virtual retraction onto um, A. Okay, so this is an example where you start with a virtual retract H, you just uh, will take an index to overgroup and this is no longer, if you chose X to be, let's say, free group of rank two, it's not virtually billion, so that's it. You cannot lift it anymore to A. Okay, so the question two, the answer is negative. Um, so what about question one? Question one was about, uh, stability of LR under commensurability. So can you go, does LR go up? So, well, question two, if, if, if the answer was positive, it would answer question one, but the negative answer doesn't quite uh, 
surprise for us because it would have sufficed if I knew uh, an example of a non-virtually abelian group X such that X cross X has a LAR, but I don't know any such examples. Perhaps there are none. So this is a question for the audience. If you can find one, I would be interested to see. So I don't have any examples of this kind. One generated non-virtually abelian group X such that X cross X has a LAR. But uh, we can use different approach to tackle this question, namely the very, you know, the, the very last example of a group with LR, uh, Olshansky, Davis Olshansky example was uh, a generalized um, lamp lighter group. So here we take C2 squared with Z, by the result it has LR, but uh, it's not difficult to find an index to overgroup of this group, which doesn't have LR. It's basically extended by an automorphism of the base, which permutes the two factors, and this will not have LR anymore. So this theorem shows that uh, the answer to this question is also negative. So it's not stable under commensurability in general. So lots of negative uh, results. Um, okay, so the reason why I sort of got interested in this topic is this uh, conjecture of Long and Reed, which was actually a theorem in their paper, but uh, it's, there, is, there is no proof of it really. So if uh, basically they conjectured that if case one generated linear group over C over the complex numbers, then LR is stable under passing to finite index subgroups, so overgroups, sorry. So if it has LR, then every finite index overgroup of K also has LR. So I haven't, I don't have an answer to this conjecture. It's still open <laughs> because our counterexample that worked in general, this was the generalized lamp lighter group. This uh, is not linear over C. It's not virtually torsion free. <clears throat> it has infinite torsion in there. Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah, back to uh, soluble groups. So, for linear groups, of course, there is the Tietz alternative, which says that every finitely generated subgroup is either virtually, billion, uh, virtually soluble or contains a free group, free subgroup. So if it is the case that it is virtually solvable, then uh, the conjecture is true, but it's somehow vacuous uh, because actually what you can show is that a finely generated linear solvable group K has LR if and only if it is virtually even. So for linear solvable groups, basically there is no, no chance. Um, Yeah, this is somehow, of course, all polycyclic groups are linear. So this is another way of uh, proving the same statement that I proved. Okay, so again, this is a negative, in some sense, a negative result for LR. But uh, what's something maybe unknown, still unknown and very interesting for me. Okay, so if you tried answering this conjecture, what is the next uh, class of linear groups uh, with LR you would consider? I mean, it's not it's not solvable groups. I mean, for solvable groups, this is vacuously, vacuously true. So if you went through the uh, you know, through my list of examples of groups with LR known examples, uh, first was finite groups, then virtually abelian groups, and the third one was free groups. So it's natural to ask about virtually free groups. And this was really the question I uh, worked quite hard on. Do finitely generated virtually free groups satisfy LR? And I don't have an answer. And I, I even cannot, you know, I, I cannot say I'm 90% sure of an answer. So I think I, I'm 70% for it and 30% against it, I would say a little bit. So there may be a counterexample 
so I don't have an answer for this. Of course, it's true for uh, free groups satisfy LR by Marshall Hall's theorem. Virtually free groups, I don't know. Okay, um, so yeah, so I have this property VRC mentioned in the beginning. So this was another of these virtual retracting properties. So it means every cyclic subgroup is a virtual retract. And this turns out to be a much weaker property than LR, uh, but then uh, it is also much better to work with. So one, well, it is weaker, but uh, it's, there is, a, I mean, actually it's stronger than you would first think because if it has VRC, then actually every finitely generated virtually Lillian group is also virtually retracted. So, by definition, VRC is just every cyclic subgroup is virtually retract, but you can extend it to all finitely generated virtually Lillian subgroups. Okay, so it's it's slightly slightly stronger than you can you you would think in the beginning, but it is much better behaved. Um, okay, so. It is stable under subgroups and direct products. This was already uh, noticed by Long and Reed. Uh, it is stable under commensurability. So this is the maybe the most interesting thing about it that you can it does go up to finite index unlike LR. Uh, it is therefore stable under amalgamated products and H and extensions over finite subgroups. Basically. From the fact that it's stable under free products and commensurability, it follows. Um, yeah, so so therefore F2 cross F2, it has VRC because F2 has VRC and it's stable under direct products, but as we saw, it does not have LR because it's not LERF. Okay, uh, well, more sort of groups with VRC, a graph product of groups uh, with VRC has VRC, so yeah, ignore this if you don't know what a graph product is. But the main corollary of this is that any group that virtually embeds into a right angle Coxeter or Artin group has VRT. So this shows that in, <coughs> so in geometric group theory, people who, you know, in the past 10 years or so have been proving that lots of groups do virtually embed into right angle Coxeter or Artin groups. For instance, fundamental groups of all compact hyperbolic manifolds do, or closed hyperbolic manifolds do. So uh, this is a big theorem of uh, Agol. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically um, any such group will have VRC. Okay, uh, yes, again, I mean, the, if you remember the proof that polycyclic groups have a large, even only if they're virtually billion. This is actually true for a weaker statement. They have VRC even only if they're virtually billion. Um, you cannot use the same argument, but something similar will work. Okay, and the question, which I don't know about VRC. So there are a few questions uh, which I don't know, but one question, does there exist a torsion-free finitely presented group with VRC, which is neither virtually Abelian nor large? This is somehow related to the virtual T number question, which I read in Desi's paper. Does there exist a group with infinite, finitely presented group with infinite first virtual Betty number, which is not large? Is that right? So because we know that VRC implies basically for non-virtually billion groups, VRC implies infinite virtual Betty number. Well, torsion free, let's say. <clears throat> and because of that, I don't know um, an answer, an example like this, but it would be strange if VRC itself somehow implied that unless it's virtually billion, then immediately it becomes large. Oh, large, by the way, large means it's a finite index subgroup, which uh, subjects onto the free group of rank two. Yeah, that's it for my talk. Thanks for listening. Let's start. Let me promote the microphone and and thanks for the thanks for the uh, presentation. Thanks, Sasha, very much.
now I'll start the the great moment uh, the take now is that the time to question and if everybody has questions please to, uh, switch the microphone and take ahead. Well uh, I have a question. May I ask my question? Yeah of course go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, well, uh, uh, this about this kind uh, question about virtually free group, all right? Uh, about yeah, whether it has this virtual retraction property, uh, this LR property, right? Yeah, yeah. The natural the natural approach would be uh, to take a maximal normal free subgroup and try to use induction on, on the quotient, right? And then it is uh, quite easy probably to to show that if you have free bicyclic group, then it satisfies this property, all right, LR. So, uh, yeah, I've never tried uh, doing sort of special cases. So, yeah, uh, well, even, actually, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I've been thinking more of a um, general case if you have a group, you know, acting on a, on a tree with finite stabilizers. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't think I have a, let's say if even amalgamated product of two finite groups. I don't have a proof for that. Or I mentioned an extension of a finite group. Yeah, uh, but I mean, this is- really Yeah, free bicyclic, finite yeah, cyclic, yeah, possibly it might work. Yeah, uh, I haven't- Maybe approach this. about this induction. The problem with, uh, I, I wanted to ask actually whether you try to do the case free by finite P group, because then this residually P and it has nice sort of property, but. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't. I'm, I mean, somehow I've, uh, I tried, um, yeah, I tried working with a tree because there is an, uh, there is a sort of a geometric way of uh, looking at virtual free groups, right? So, and uh, you can do various things with, uh, with uh, trees. You can prove Marshall Hall theorem using trees and you can prove a generalization of that uh, again, but uh, for virtual free groups, some certain generalization, but somehow it doesn't work. So I haven't looked at many special cases. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, again, and I sometimes I've tried constructing counter example, but I really don't know how to approach it either. So, kind of. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I would be very happy. We're here if anybody can uh, yeah have some progress make some progress on this question this is really the question uh the next question to ask basically about property lr especially in view of this conjecture mm -hmm. uh, if, if it doesn't have lr then uh, this is a, a, a an answer to their conjecture a negative answer which i suspect it should be negative but No other questions? Well, I mean, can I ask a question about Thompson Group F? Thompson Group I don't F. Have a, yes, I don't have a feeling whether it has or doesn't have neither of these properties. Well, I've never it studied virtual retraction. Yeah, it doesn't have, it's not even residually finite, right? It has a simple derived subgroup. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. so so yeah, so this uh, okay, it's not this, even residually LR, LR okay. implies okay, learn. Fair enough. VRC, yeah, VRC yeah. is a much more, I mean, LRF is a very strong property, and it, not only it's LRF, it also goes to you know, all, all finite index subgroups are virtual retracts, or all finite generated subgroups are virtual retracts. So, I mean, this is uh, quite a strong restriction. Uh, yeah, but uh, Thompson's group F doesn't even have uh, the yes, virtual property of the Okay, yeah, then that's all right. But the way, what, what about free, free group times Z? Does it have this property? Uh, free groups direct product Z. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's stable under direct products with virtually abelian groups. Uh, virtually abelian groups are the good guides for these properties. So, yeah, you can take direct product with virtually abelian, it will work. 
Okay. No other questions? I don't understand well. You can replace the LER by B, B, R, C or not? In this conjecture, in this conjecture. Sorry, uh, can you repeat your question? And if I, if it's possible to replace the LER, LER by B, B, C, R in this conjecture. Oh, replace. Yeah. Yeah, so for, for VRC, <clears throat> it is true. For VRC, you don't even need really linearity. Uh, VRC always goes to, yes, this is uh, the theorem I think I mentioned uh, here. Uh, Measurability yeah. is, is, uh, is fine. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one, one reason for, um, <laughs> for working with VRC rather than Laro. It's uh, the other reason is really that uh, I mean VRC has something to do with virtually abelian groups because uh, it's really the theory of virtually abelian groups uh, that comes in into place uh, to prove this here. Yeah. So for VRC, we know that uh, this is true. For instance, so virtually free groups for sure have a VRC. This yeah. How you said that this VRC preserved uh, amalgamate, amalgamated product in some sense. Uh, could you uh, specify more, a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you have an amalgamated product of two uh, groups with VRC or a finite subgroup, then it will have VRC. So, or more generally, if you have a graph of uh, groups with uh, finite edge groups and um, vertex groups have RC, then the, the fundamental group of this graph of groups, finite graph of groups, will have the RC. All right. I have a question from Professor Said. He asked if G is a Riffy product, G equal B. With L, where G is finite abelian group and L is free abelian of a finite rank. So G has the property LR. Um, so B is finite abelian, L is free abelian of finite. Yeah, so, so I have a characterization of, of groups of, of this. It's a good example, a uh, good question. So if when L is Z actually, so B rib Z, it has LR if and only if B is a, a semi-simple abelian group, namely it's a, it's a direct sum of cyclic T groups. So for instance, uh, this uh, example that I have here, um, where was it? T two squared, a reef Z. This has LR, right? This mm -hmm. is the theorem of uh, uh, Orshanskin Davis. This has LR, but if you type C4 reef Z, it will not have LR. Uh -huh. yeah, so, yeah, I mean. Okay. Some more, some more question? Oh, if not, let's take again for a shot, please. Or not, uh, with the mic.